If I had to describe the course Engineering Statics in one problem, it would be the truss. Everybody's seen trusses in the form of bridges and cell phone towers and big electrical power lines along the side of the highway. They are sparse structures consisting mainly of triangles. And in statics, you learn how forces are distributed throughout the structure. In this statics video on trusses, you're going to learn three things. First is going to be the difference between method of joints and method of sections, which are the two main methods that you'll use to solve truss problems. Second, I'll give you recommendations on which method you should use personally for any given problem. And third, we're going to work through an example problem that I'm going to solve using both method of sections and method of joints. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. Statics is the first real mathematical engineering course most engineering students are going to take. And if you can get through statics, you can pass any course in your engineering program. The courses are going to get harder later on, but you'll be smarter by then. And the tools and techniques and rigorous problem solving method that you develop in this first course will help you be successful in those follow on courses. So make sure as you go through your statics class that you're learning for the long haul. If you're studying for each test and then forgetting everything, you are setting yourself up for failure in future coursework. Before we get into the differences between joints and sections, I wanna point out that they do both start the same way and that is by finding reaction forces. For this truss in particular, we're gonna be interested in that reaction force at H at the roller joint in the vertical direction and then the pin at A is gonna have forces in both the X and Y directions. Then once you have solved for these reaction forces, that's when your solution path will differ. The main difference is method of joints is a particle equilibrium solution and method of sections is a rigid body equilibrium solution. If you go method of joints, you're gonna draw free body diagrams at each joint. If you go method of sections, you're gonna break the piece in two and then draw a free body diagram for one section. For method of joints, you almost always have to start at one of your reaction forces and then zigzag your way through the truss to get to the forces in the middle that you're actually trying to find. The reason this happens is that in particle equilibrium, you only have two equations, sum of forces in X and sum of forces in Y equals zero, which means you can only solve for two unknowns. So if you look at a joint and there are more than two unknowns, you can't start there. You have to start at a different point and work your way in. So looking at our initial picture, it would have been great to start at point F since two of our forces uh, are at point F. But unfortunately, there's four unknowns at that location, so I have to start somewhere else and work our way there. So I've drawn free body diagrams for points H, G, and F. So on the drawing, I'm kind of circling those in on purple now, up on the top. And so if we start at H and zigzag our way through, we'll be able to solve for everything. So in particular, once we solve for the reaction force at H, then the free body diagram at H only has two unknowns. And you'll be able to do the sum of forces in the Y direction to solve for F, F, H, and then the sum of forces in the X direction to solve for F, G, H. Once you know those two, those become known on the other free body diagrams as well. Free body diagram F still has three unknowns, so we can't go there yet but we can go to free body diagram G, where now there are two known values, the 12 and the FGH, and two unknowns. So a sum of forces in the Y direction would let you solve for FFG, and a sum of forces in the X direction will let you solve for FEG, and in fact, that FEG is one of the final answers. Once you know the FFG, you can then plug that into the free body diagram at F, and then there would be two knowns and only two unknowns, and that will let you then do a sum of forces in X and Y to solve for your last two unknowns, which then would let you finish the problem. So the main advantage to method of joints is that all of these particle equilibrium problems are particle equilibrium. There's no moments, only sum of forces in X and Y. So this method is probably easier. The disadvantage is that we couldn't solve for the final answer right away. We actually had to solve for three different members first before solving the final answer, and so this method is longer. It takes more time and had more steps. For method of sections, once you've figured out your reaction forces, your next goal is to break the piece in half into sections. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is to break the piece through as many of the final answers as you can. I've highlighted all of the final answers on the drawing, and this might make it kind of obvious that a vertical split right through those three highlighted lines is gonna be the best place to create the sections. 
So I'm gonna draw a line right there to show where it's cut. And then down below on the screen, you can see that I've decided to keep the right hand section, which is just that triangle F, G, H. And then each of the three pieces that I cut in half become forces. So to finish this problem using method of sections, we'll just need this one free body diagram We'll just use sum of forces in the x direction equals zero, sum of forces in the y direction is zero, and sum of moments equals zero. And in fact, we might even just do two or three moment equations and skip the x and y directions altogether. If this explanation has helped you understand the difference between method of joints and method of sections, please hit the thumbs up below this video. It really does help YouTube recognize that this is valuable content so that it will recommend it to other students who are looking for statics videos too. So how do you decide which method you should use for any given problem? There's really two criteria you should use. One is based on the problem, and then one is based on you personally. When considering the problem itself, if you are trying to find the force in every member of the truss, or in multiple members that are very far apart from each other, in those cases, method of joints is probably gonna be the fastest way to get to an answer. Since each free body diagram is a little bit faster being only a particle equilibrium problem. However, if you're only looking for a very small number of forces, and especially if those forces are right next to each other and can be cut through when making a single section, then method of sections is gonna be the fastest way to reach a final answer, since you can find the things you're looking for immediately without having to find other pieces first, which you usually have to do with method of joints. So then the other factor to consider is you personally, if you think that moments are a weakness of yours, or if you have like a D or an F average in the course right now and you're struggling to try to pass, then in that case, I would stick with method of joints for every trust problem. Usually when students fail statics, it's moments that they never really understand. And so if you have a choice to use moments or not, it's gonna be a better choice for you to do the method of joints where you don't have to do moments. If you're more middle of the road in your class and you have a B, C, or D in the class and you can generally understand moments, you just don't always do it correct every time, then in that case, I would learn both methods, method of joints and method of sections, and figure out which one you like best. Some students that don't have high grades are actually really good at moments, they're just inconsistent. And so in that case, you might actually really enjoy this method better, and then since it's faster to do, you might be more successful using moments. On the other hand, method of joints might just click really well with you, and then I would recommend sticking with that one. And then the last case would be students at the high end of the class that are looking at an A or maybe at worst a B. And in this case, you understand how to do moments, you've really learned all of the concepts in this course, and you're mainly just at risk of making math mistakes or calculator errors on the test. In that case, I would recommend that you use method of sections as often as possible. Method of joints will almost always have more steps involved, and for you, that just means more opportunities to make a sign error or a calculator mistake. So if you can learn both methods equally as well, you should default to method of sections, which will have fewer steps, which is less opportunity to make a math error, since you're not as worried about making conceptual errors. All right, so let's solve this problem now. We'll do method of joints first, method of sections second. So the first part of the solution is gonna to be to find the reaction forces. This is gonna be used for both method of joints and method of sections. For this, you ignore all the triangles inside the truss and just draw the outer shape along with all of the external forces and all of the support reactions. Since I'm planning ahead and knowing that I'm gonna be working with the right-hand side for this problem, I only actually need to find FH. There's no need to solve for the reaction forces at A. And that's an important time-saving technique. Trust problems can get really big. You need to plan ahead so that you solve for as few unnecessary things as possible. So I start off with the free body diagram for point H, and then I'm gonna add my X direction equation and Y direction equations. From the Y direction equation, we see that F, FH is the only unknown, so we can get to a final answer right there. For every member of the truss, I'm always gonna draw them on my free body diagram in tension, so that means that a negative answer actually means that this piece is really in compression. However, when that piece appears on another free body diagram, I'm still going to draw it in tension and still use this negative number in the equations. So sign errors involving forces in compression is one of the easiest way to make mistakes for this type of problem. And so now writing down the X direction equation and plugging in the negative 32 means it's negative negative 32, which makes it positive. So you get a final answer for FGH that is positive. I've drawn the free body diagram now for point F. You can always breathe a little sigh of relief whenever you see that you have no diagonal forces in a free body diagram. That means that this part's gonna be a lot easier than the rest of the problem. So writing out the equation in the X and Y direction as expected, they're both fairly straightforward. 
and we get one of the final answers, and then another intermediate step in FFG. One more joint to go. The free body diagram has four members all intersecting at one point, but from our previous two free body diagrams, we've solved for two of these already. Writing out the equations of equilibrium, sum of forces in x and y equals zero. The equations look pretty complex and long, but a lot of that is just due to the square root sign. This is still just two equations and two unknowns, so this is just like all of the simultaneous equation problems you did a couple chapters ago. So changing the fractions into decimals makes this y direction equation look a little bit simpler when I isolate for fdf. And then I'm going to take that term and plug it back into the x direction equation. So when I plug back into the x direction equation, I can solve for fef as approximately negative 7.58 kilonewtons. And I'll add here that that negative sign means that this is in compression. And we can plug that number back into this blue equation here to find that fdf is going to equal negative 22.62 kilonewtons. And again, the negative sign is going to mean that it is also in compression. And since I didn't note it earlier, we'll scroll back up and make a note that FEG, since the final answer was positive, this member was in tension. So for method of sections, we'll assume that we've already completed the step where we've solved for the reaction force on the right hand side at H as 16.5. This was the same way we started the method of joints problem. And now the goal is going to be to solve for each of our three unknowns with one single equation instead of a simultaneous set of three equations and three unknowns. The easiest one to solve right away is going to be by doing a sum of moments at point F to cancel out the two diagonal forces and find FEG right away. So summing moments at point F cancels out the two diagonal forces, allowing us to solve for FEG as 27.5 kilonewtons. I put a, a T in parentheses there to show that it is in tension. Now, normally at this point, after doing a moments, you would usually do a sum of forces in X or Y. However, when we look at the two remaining unknowns, you can see that they both are diagonal, and so they're both gonna have X and Y components. That's gonna leave us solving a set of simultaneous equations. So there's a clever way to do this with another moment that'll actually let us isolate one of those forces by itself. And that's gonna be with this new dot that I've drawn on the drawing, which is point E. Point E isn't even on this right-hand section, but you can still use it as a point to sum moments around. You don't have to sum moments only at a point on your drawing. You can sum moments about any point in space. And since two of our forces intersect at point E, that will isolate FDF as the only unknown in a moment equation there. So this moment equation isn't easy, but it is probably easier than doing simultaneous equations. So what I've done is I've split FDF into its X direction component, which then uses the vertical dimension three, and then also F into a vertical component, which uses this horizontal distance five. It's a little bit of calculator work because of the signs, but you get to an answer of negative 22.62, which I've labeled with a C meaning compression. At this point, it's probably easiest to finish with the sum of forces in the X or Y direction. Since we've already solved for the other two forces, FEF is the only unknown in the X direction. So when we plug in the other two values, we can get to its final answer to see it's also a force in compression. So method of joints, method of sections, we got the same answers at the end of both techniques. Method of joints was a little bit easier because each free body diagram only had X and Y direction equations, no moments. But method of sections was a little bit faster. We solved it with just three equations and we only solved for the three unknowns without having to solve for anything else in between. The most difficult part of the method of sections is probably the spatial reasoning of recognizing that you can do a sum of moments about point E in order to isolate one of the forces to find it faster. Without that shortcut, you would have had to solve this using simultaneous equations which would then add more opportunities to make algebra or calculator mistakes. If this video has helped you understand trusses better and you're interested in watching more videos like it, please subscribe to my channel so you can see each new video as they come out. And if you wanna watch another statics video right now, YouTube probably has some recommendations up on the screen you can click on. Or if you just sit there and do nothing, YouTube will autoplay you something, which good chance is gonna be another statics video too. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.